Let's stay in the NFL and examine our second coaching firing in as many weeks. Monday, Falcons head coach Dan Quinn was relieved of his duties, along with GM Thomas Dimitrioff, after a 0-5 start to the season. Quinn entered the season on shaky ground after the team started 1-7 last year, but did finish 6-2 to keep Quinn's job. However, despite a big offseason and big expectations, the Falcons have collapsed several times, blowing big leads in a trend that reaches all the way back to the infamous Patriots-Falcons Super Bowl in 2016. So uh, what went wrong with Quinn's time in Atlanta, and where do the Falcons go from here, Jay? I don't even know where you. I don't even know where to begin. To be quite honest with you, obviously, uh, you know, in some in some way, shape, or form, it honestly feels like all roads lead back to that infamous Super Bowl where they blew that twenty-eight three lead. And some of those problems have definitely, you know, reared their ugly head recently with loss uh, loss to the Cowboys. Um, they blew a they blew a big lead to the Bears. I mean, seemingly it just became they became a a punchline. Um, to just – they can't hold leads. and But the, the bigger problem to me is just defensively they just degraded um, over the past several years. You and, and that year they went to the Super Bowl, they were pretty respectable defense. I believe they were top ten um, in spring. And then just since then it is just – it's just deteriorated to the point now where so far this season uh, I've got them at 31st total. Um, in total defense and the only team that's worse than them in scoring defense is uh, new uh, spoiler alert, the Cowboys. Um, so they're, so they're terrible. Um, they can't hold a lead. Um, and that's what, to me, that's what um, we talk about coaches and uh, where they hang their hat on. Dan Quinn's a defensive guy. And just with how that their defense just can't do anything um, anymore. And some of it, you know, you can point to injuries for some of it. I mean, Keanu Neal is all of a sudden, a, he's just a yearly injury, it seems. Um, Deion Jones in and out every now and again. Um, you lose a guy like Vic Beasley in free agency. You know, that, that hurts you to some degree. Desmond Trufant, you can even look at him. Um, it just, but they, were, they could never keep that same form that they had. And, you know, Dan Quinn coming over from his uh, Seattle days, I mean, you, you expect some form of defense, and they just, they just don't have any anymore. Um, and it's, it's, this is one of those things. I know I you know, gave the, the Texans some grief for um, the timing of their move, letting Bill O'Brien go. I, this, is, this, is one of those, this is one of those where I think um, the Falcons got this one. They should they should next win last year. Uh, if you remember, they started one and seven last year. That, I mean, it just – underachieving in every way um they they somehow went six and two the rest of the way and made it seem like oh yeah maybe we can build off this in the next year and as we saw that was that was clearly a falsehood um but it's just it's just remarkable that a team with um matt ryan and julio jones could ever get to be this bad I mean, that's uh, – Matt Ryan was was an MVP candidate or in the Super Bowl year, and did he went and might have won the MVP. I'm, I'm – yeah, He won the MVP that year. Didn't? Okay. Yeah. And then Julio Jones, who we recognize as a top three wide receiver. With that foundation, it's just hard to believe that they could reach this point and just seemingly just not be able to win anything. And it just got – I mean, recently it just got to a point of embarrassment and now Dan Quinn's gone. He was there since 2015. Thomas Dimitrov, the general manager, he's been around since 2008, actually drafted Matt Ryan back in 2008. Um, but they kind of, when they lost that Super Bowl, that was kind of, it ended up kind of being the bar for them. It is, maybe we expect to actually win stuff now. Made the playoffs the next year, and that, but now counting, the, I mean, assuming, assuming they don't go, go on some incredible run, it's going to be three straight years of missing the playoffs in which a city that, you know, expects some level of consistent success from their team when you got Matt Ryan and Julio Jones, but not only the Super Bowl, it also traces back to Kyle Shanahan who left that, who left that team after the Super Bowl went to San Francisco and their offense seemingly it's, it's never been the same. The, the running game hasn't been the same to be kind of a found, a foundational piece of that offense and balance out. Uh, their passing attack. Um, it's um, it's it, it's. I, I'm quite to be quite honest. I'm not sure uh, where they go from here. I don't have any suggestion on who you would bring in to kind of right this ship, both in the uh, head coaching in the on the sideline and in terms of personnel. I mean, 
and, there, and there's a lot of first round picks that is, I mean, you look at Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, there's some other solid ones, Calvin Ridley. I mean, he's a good one that you brought in as well. There's, there's a lot of misses. Uh, Vic Beasley had one good year and that's about it. And he's gone over to Tennessee now. Um, Keanu Neal, um, when he's on the field, he's great, but I mean, too far too often, he's not on the field. Um, Tack McKinley, that, that looks like to be somewhat of a disappointment. They didn't even pick up his option. Um, we'll see how A.J. Terrell does, but they had those two offensive linemen they drafted in the first year last year, and not sure how they're doing. I don't think they're doing, I don't think they're doing great. Um, Desmond Trufant, another guy that, you know, he was injury riddled, although he was productive at times. Um, he's now gone. So overall, just in recent year, there's when you set the bar at that level and reach a Super Bowl, it, it creates expectations that you've at least got to be contending in some way year in and year out. And you can't be consistently um, just under sub 500 and, and get off to these these awful starts. I mean, you can't start one and seven and oh and five and, and expect to keep your job. So I, I think the question in lies with the pieces that you have left on offense, can you still win with these offensive pieces? And if not, are you going to move off these guys and just do a total rebuild? If you're going to try to win with these offensive pieces, then I think you go and find, first of all, their next head coach better be an offensive guy. We're done with the defensive guys. Don't bring me another defensive minded head coach. He's out of here. I don't want to hear it no more. Um, you go and see if you get you an Eric B or, you know, one of these these offensive uh, girl rules to put some life back into the offense. Yeah, I heard what Jay said. they still a top 10 unit. But are they really maximizing that unit? I don't per se think so. And, and as far as the defense go, listen, it's time to get you a, a defense coordinator, not one of these dinosaurs that have been on all 32 NFL teams. I'm, I'm sick of that. It's time to get you a, a young mind, um, a, a, a up and comer. You know, maybe a, a young defense coordinator been on a few teams, but you, we don't really know of them quite yet. Get you someone that can relate to these draft picks that you're drafting. These dinosaurs cannot relate to these guys. That's why you're never gonna get max max effort out of these guys when you're speaking Chinese and they're listening in English. People overlook this. You have to be able to translate with these young guys. They're young. Generations are going. Generations change. Generation X is different from Generation Y, which is different from Generation Z. We need to understand that. How do I know this? Look at the wide receivers for the Patriots. Look at the same guys that Tom Brady had, and they hated his guts. Cam Newton come in, these dudes smiling and having a damn good time. I wonder why. Oh, maybe because he translates a little better to them. So, yes, it matters. I got it. This is a business. I got all that. Come in, do your job, get paid, whoop de whoop. But you're dealing with individuals that, that, you know, some are soft, some are hard, some whatever the case might be. You need to bring someone into this franchise that can relate to that. I'm, we're tired of living off that Super Bowl run. We're done with that. that. That was good. That was cute. Mike Shanahan that made it, um, I'm sorry, Kyle Shanahan that made it to his own Super Bowl since then. That's how long it's been. He didn't took his own team to the Super Bowl. So with that said, we're going to stop living off that. It's time to make our own uh, story to live off of and stop, you know, talking about the good old days back when they had newspapers. Nah, we done with that, all right? So you go, you get a young mind, you get your, you get your first of all, you get your offensive minded head coach. First and foremost, you find you one. It's a lot on my there. I mean, you get paid enough, figure it out. And then you go get you a young defensive mind. Um, what's the guy's name? Like Chris Richard or something like that. Get you a, a younger guy on the defense side of the ball. Bring them in where they can talk a little lingo with these young players and maybe rejuvenate them because we think they're done already. But it's just that they haven't talked to the right person. And maybe, only maybe then, you can turn this franchise around and we can see something from the Falcons. But it's not a clean house. I think, I think the owner doing the right thing. It's not a clean house. This ain't working no more. I'm tired of, I'm tired of hearing about taxi cabs. We take Ubers now. You can get that old stuff out of here. You know what I'm saying? It's time to evolve. You know what I'm saying? We worry about Wi-Fi more than having an actual cable box now. We don't care about none of that other stuff. We're, it's 2020. Let's move on. Let's catch up with the times and get out the old age.
Yeah, I think Drake's got a good uh, good sum- summary when you talk about the fact that really kind of a bit of a fork in the road here. You know, Dan Quinn being fired, uh, you know, Jay covered that really well. There's no reason that he shouldn't have been fired. He should have probably been fired last year. Is part of a couple coaches that should already be fired this year, but is what it is. Um, and I think that if you if you look at the pieces they have, you look at Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, you know, maybe Todd Gurley. He's been okay from you know what we've seen. Um, maybe still not in his old self. If you think those pieces are good enough to win around, maybe you do go see if you can get Eric Bandamy from uh, KC to come over and, and try to keep this going. You know, maybe you say, okay, maybe the Dan Quinn lost the team. He lost the vision. We get another guy in here that can kind of spruce up the joint. You know, maybe we put some new wallpaper up and we try to keep it as is. Or you go to a full rebuild because here, here's some of the problems they have. You know, you're talking about the salary cap. They're about to get in a big salary cap mess. Um, they have $25 million in dead cap on this year's um, dead money. And in 21, uh, Matt Ryan's uh, hit goes from 18.9 to 40.9. Julio's goes from 20.4 to 23.05. And Jake Matthews from 10.8 to 20.2. And that's just a couple guys. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons have the oldest roster in the NFL currently set. Their average age is 26.9 years old. And the youngest being the Jaguars at 24.9. You say, well, that's only two years. But when you actually do the math and get rid of the averages, that's like 100 years of total age difference between the rosters. I mean – it's Atlanta has been limping this to the finish line ever since that Super Bowl with, you know, overpriced veterans and, and stuff like that. And it's just not working anymore. So, you know, they have that problem. And if you look at the Ryan and Julio themselves, I mean, you know, Matt Ryan's 35. Uh, Julio Jones is 31. They both have big hits coming up. Neither are playing at the level that we're accustomed to. You know, you could make an argument Matt Ryan, you know, maybe is still pretty good, probably is. But we know 35, we're seeing even now guys like Drew Brees, you know, that wall hits fast. I mean, even maybe Brady has finally hit that wall this year. It looks like he's getting really close to it, if not. So do do you restart with Matt Ryan at 35? Like, I don't don't think you do that. So if you answer that question, you say, okay, no, 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 no. We're tearing the walls out this thing. We're putting a new roof on the house. We're gutting the foundation, and we're starting over from scratch. Then from there, you kind of go wherever you want. But, you know, I think the first problem – is the other problem you have real quick is the fact that the Falcons seem to have from what the beat writers say is there's a little bit of a ownership and um, communication. Like there's like a leadership kind of issue where there was a former GM that got fired that the, this guy replaced, that got fired. And I guess he still is in the organization. Uh, his last name is McKay. And now he's kind of been lurking around for years and no one really knows who's in charge. And that, that's a problem. Arthur Blank needs to just, gut this whole operation if that's the case get all new fresh minds in here get the old guys out of here and cut these dead contracts and just just restart it and and hey you know what falcons good news in a ridiculously um competitive top of the draft board you guys are second only behind the giants after the uh, tiebreakers are factored in so you want your sign you trevor lawrence you're, you're you're doing it right